It's now the third time I'm trying to do this. Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth. Take three, we're gonna get it right this time. We're talking about how more and more of you are choosing individual or taxable accounts over retirement accounts and why that may be the case. So this isn't really a video to try to push you one way or the other. Just want to explain what I see going on out there, why some people might choose that, and maybe it's a benefit for you, maybe not. All right, so the tax laws are changed, right? We have lower tax brackets, and with the way that individual or taxable accounts are treated, it may actually make more sense for you to use that as your retirement vehicle as well. In addition, since According to Fidelity, 71% of you touched your retirement accounts earlier than you were supposed to last year, which may have mean that you paid a penalty or some taxes of some kind. Well, maybe you wanna think about a, a individual or taxable account. Now, ideally you shouldn't touch it till retirement, but instead of being that guy that says, leave your money, you know, don't touch it till retirement. Well, if most of you are touching it early, then well, let's make sure we're getting you the best possible setup for what may happen to you. So let's get started. We're gonna do some pros and cons of the 401k versus the taxable account. One of the pros of a 401k is that it reduces your taxable income. The money that you contribute is tax deferred and so therefore it can reduce your taxable income or even bring you into a lower marginal tax rate. The marginal tax rate is just a fancy way of saying the highest possible tax in that bracket that you could pay. So given that the tax rates have actually dropped a little bit, 401ks can help you reduce your taxable income, which may mean a lower tax bill for you while you're saving for retirement. Little side note, did you know that in your 401k, when you start taking money out in retirement, not early, but in retirement, uh, or you're required to start taking money out, that money that you pull out to use for your income is taxed at your marginal tax rate. That's one of those little key words you don't usually notice, which just means that whatever money comes out doesn't get taxed at the lower tax rates or gradually as your normal income tax does. It goes right to the marginal tax rate and you pay that top rate. So something to keep in mind. Another good thing about 401ks is the company match. I say this all the time. If your company matches anything that you put into your 401k, then you have to do it for now. It's free money. Now that might fluctuate over time. See, in the downtimes, some companies tend to reduce the amount or eliminate the amount that they will contribute to your 401k. And for that reason, we use the match portion as a bonus. We don't really factor that into your retirement plan as we're working for you here at Jazz Wealth. One of the negatives of a 401k is limited investment choices. Now, they're not horrible. I'm not saying they're bad investments, but you really do have a limit as to the choices. Another negative is the target date funds that you find in 401ks. I don't like to make videos that like scare people or try to pressure you one way or the other out of fear, but target date funds really, really have me concerned right now. And if you watch some of our previous videos, you'll kind of see they are taking extreme, absurd, ridiculous amounts of risk in your target date fund. And that's gonna come back to haunt a ton of people and I hate to see that. So I hope things change there, but for now, they're taking risk that you have never ever seen before in the history of target date funds. Well, let's go over to the taxable accounts. So in a taxable account, one of the negatives is as you put money in, you're not reducing your taxable uh, income. So the money goes in is just any money. There are actually no rules. The money can come from anywhere. If your friend owed you some money and they paid you back, you could put that in an individual or taxable account. So it doesn't help you in the tax in the short term, your taxes for the short term. Now that may be a big deal to you. It may not be for others. So again, this is not a video to push you one way or the other. We're just making comparisons. Another bonus for the taxable accounts is that there are no income limits. You can make as much as you like, contribute as much as you like, which means there's no contribution limits. So 5,500 for a Roth IRA or traditional, that doesn't apply in a taxable account. You can put as much money as you like in there from any source, anywhere that you want to. There are no rules. There's also no rules on what you can invest in. There's no limits like the 401k has. In a taxable account, you can invest in actually anything you want on the planet. We have access to do that for you, but you don't have to, you know, you choose what something that fits you, but you do have access to invest in anything, which means you don't have to invest in mutual funds that charge you expense ratios. So how this works is in a taxable account, let's talk about the tax side of things here. Let's really get this down. In a taxable account, what happens is you pay the tax 
when you realize any gains and realizing gains means when you sell a position that you owned for a profit. That does not mean when you pull money out of your account. So if you bought something on day one, you sold something for a profit on day two, as soon as you sell it, that difference, if you made a profit, that's your taxable gain. Now it's a little different in an individual account. When you sell something for a profit, the IRS looks at how long did you hold the position. If you bought it at you know, two o'clock in the afternoon, you sold it at three o'clock in the afternoon, that's a short-term capital gain. Good for you, you made a quick profit. If you bought something in January, you sold it in March, that's also a short-term capital gain. In fact, if you buy a position and you sell it anytime between that day and exactly one year and one day later, so anytime in that window, then that's a short-term capital gain and whatever the profits are will be added to your taxable income. That could be a big deal, so something you wanna consider. However, if you buy something, let's think of this as your long-term account or you're holding for retirement. You buy something and you sell it sometime after one year and one day, you pay a flat 15% long-term capital gains tax. 15% doesn't get added to your income, it's just 15%. Now, there are actually ways where you could pay zero dollars in taxes, uh, it, depending on the size of the gain and your tax bracket, but for the most part, 15% is what you will pay. Now, think about that for a second. In your 401k, when you start pulling money out, whether early or in retirement, when you pull it out, you pay whatever your marginal tax rate is. So that's the highest tax bracket. If your tax bracket is above 15%, then you're paying more on your withdrawals than you would be in a taxable account. Now granted, you didn't get to defer the, the contributions all these years. You already paid taxes on the money in your taxable account. So something to think about there. I hope it doesn't confuse you, but a little bit of a difference there. And the final pro or the final good thing about individual accounts is you could take the money out at any time for any reason. Again, how long you held the positions has to do with the type of tax you'll pay. And that's our job here is to make sure that we either sell a position that has a very small profit or a position you've owned for a long time to make sure you have the smallest possible tax bill. But you don't need an excuse. You could use it to buy a house. You could use it to buy a car, send your mom's boyfriend on a trip around the globe. Whatever it is you want to take the money out for, nobody even asks. You don't have to fill out a form. You don't have to make a request. You just pull the money out. When you're ready, you put it back in. No limits, no max contribution limits, nothing, and nobody cares if you take your money out or put it back in. So, for the 71% of you that touched your early retirement last year for 2017, how much did that cost you for taking money out? Now again, I'm not trying to push you one way or the other, I'm just saying, look, if you're the type of person that uses your retirement account for some savings and then maybe occasionally you take some money out but you're leaving some of it for retirement, this may be a good complement to what you already have. It may not be a good standalone retirement investment vehicle, but it may be a good complement. Well, if you enjoyed that video, you really like this one. This one shows you how 13.4 is the most magical number that you'll wanna know in retirement. If we can help you in any way, jazzwealth.com, or click chat with Jazz, send me an email, whatever you like, or just keep watching videos. That one down there is pretty good. We'll talk to you then.